What a pleasure to be here, everybody. I think I'm just going to, I think I get to just go ahead and start, which is fantastic. It's nice to see all of you here today. Hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. My name is Rob Booker. Today we're going to talk about trend trading. Anybody here like to trend trade or do you think trend trade is a total scam? <laughs> it's not a scam, but uh, you know, or some people sometimes they talk about trend trading like it's the greatest thing ever and it can never fail which of course trend trading can be difficult so i'm excited to spend some time with you today everybody that was fun to listen to josh for a little while um it's a hard act to follow but i'm going to do my best here and i just want to th say thanks to renee and everybody for inviting me here to this investor inspiration event uh today we're going to talk about using missed pivots to trend trade and we're going to talk about some non-traditional stuff as well. Love to hear from you during the broadcast and I'll, I'll have plenty of time to take your questions. I look forward to your questions. I look forward to hearing what you have to say as we continue here today. Um, we're also going to talk about the time I lost 51,200 bucks on a single trade. A lot of times you come to a webinar like this, right? And well, you know, I'm not saying anything about anybody else, but it's all roses, right? And <laughs> trading can really suck um, donkey eggs badly sometimes. It can be real tough. And I want to tell you about a time when I uh, took a losing trade. And, and here's the story. This is back in 2000, 2001 when I first started trading and I was reading every book I could get my greedy little trading paws on. And I had read that trend trading was the only way to go that the most successful traders in the world were trend traders and that was what I was going to do. And I looked at the dollar Japanese yen and I figured, oh, I'm going to be a trend trader because that's obviously the only profitable way to do trading. And I'm going to wait for a trend to emerge and then I'm going to, I'm going to buy it on a dip. And this was the dollar yen. It was back in the early two thousands and it was going up like a rocket ship. And I got into the market for the with the dollar yen like 2002 and i was like i'm gonna buy this when it drops so it dropped down uh it, it did a huge correction like it was like 400 500 600 pips and i bought it on a dip and that was exactly what i should have been doing according to all the books i read and all the materials that i had studied and i'd gotten all this really so-called important education <laughs> so i bought it on a dip and i did everything right i had a stop loss in place i had a giant profit target my stop loss was smaller than my target so my risk to reward ratio was really awesome and i thought this is it i'm going to hit the big time this is going to be my big trade i'm going to make a bazillion dollars has anybody ever made you know had a feeling like they were really in on a great trade well that's how i felt <laughs> and here's what happened next the move went against, it went in my favor first, but I didn't take profit. Mistake number one, I didn't take profit. And the reason I didn't take profit was I got greedy. And we all have experienced that before. And if you haven't experienced it yet, then um, you're magical. You're like a unicorn. And there are rainbows coming out of your bottom. But I did not feel magical. And so I didn't take profit. It was a huge profit for me. It was like, it was like $10,000 in profit. But it wasn't enough for me. And I was just being a dummy. I was being just a total dummy. <laughs> and then I took my stop loss off my trade. And then a few months later, I, I closed the trade out at a 51200 and something dollar loss. It was the worst loss I ever took. It was the dumbest, dumbest thing I ever did. And there were so many lessons inside of this one mistake. And, and that's why I will often say that there's more to learn from mistakes than there are from successes. And I think you've probably heard that before. And for me, as difficult as that is, as that is for me to admit, that's the truth. And I've now been trading for 17 years, and this is one of the best lessons I ever had. That I, I I didn't manage my risk. I took my stop loss off the trade. I didn't take profits when I had a completely reasonable amount of money on the table. And then I gave up on a trade. And and I, <laughs> and the worst thing is I gave up on this stupid trade right at the moment that it was going to turn around and start moving back in my favor again. And there's just so many so many things that I learned from being in this really idiotic and dumb trade that uh, we can move on now. We don't have to talk about this forever. During the time that I was in that trade, I was a total zombie, right? I was walking around the house like with this glazed look in my eyes and uh, I was a zombie trader. I was, I was thinking about my loss all day long. I was hoping that it would come back. I was dreaming of taking some big trade that would make it all go away. And the only reason I was this 
zombie trader was because it just didn't manage things correctly. And so I got stuck in something that I really didn't need to be in. So with that introduction, I want to say hello. My name is Rob Booker. It's nice to be here together with you. Um, I've been a trader for 17 years. I've traveled around the world speaking to traders. Here's me in London where my hands froze off um, for a traders conference. I do... Um, I do. I don't really speak at those those big trader conferences anymore, like those expos and stuff like that. I just find that that's just a big, huge sales pitch for a bunch of crap, um, and I don't want to be around that. So now I just hold my own events, and uh, most of the time they're free, and we just get a few hundred traders in a room all around the world. And I'd love to meet you in person at something like that sometime. Uh, that would be great. I'm going to be in Madrid uh in june and uh i'll do one in houston texas in september and in australia later on in the year and we'll do another one in the in the united states sometime this year as well this is me sitting around in the in the one i do in madrid every year i go to the uh the forex day in madrid it's the single greatest gathering of traders uh in the world every year put on by my friend david arasnabal and it's just awesome my shirt says i'm only here for the ham because <laughs> i do love the ham that they have in Spain. These are my friends, uh, some traders and brokers and other people. Uh, this fellow right here is the um, one of the most successful traders I've ever met in my life and I've ever known in my life. He's one of my, uh, I would call him a former student now. Um, he's up now to over uh, $1,500 a day as a trader. Um, and he's just spectacular. His name is Scott. And I'll point you to a place where you can listen to an interview that I did with him. Um, he's just absolutely magnificent. He's one of my best friends. He lives in Australia, and he's just done extraordinarily well. Um, this is Scott Hines, actually, also named Scott. He's in Australia. He does extraordinarily well. This is Warwick, my friend. This is Justin, uh, a buddy of mine that's a broker. And this is Daniel, the best programmer I've ever met. And then this is some random lady who photobombed us. Okay, uh, that's my son, Isaac. That's my daughter, Olivia. And that's my wife, who's actually sitting across from me right now. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> Um, the reason I'm a trader is probably the same reason that you are a trader is that you want to spend more time with these people that you care about and that you love. Um, that's the most important thing in the world to me. I actually don't really care about trading. Um, it's a means to an end. It's a way to make money. But I'm not in it. I don't, I don't love trading. I love making money and taking care of my family. And I think you probably, if you're a little bit like me, we're going to have a good time today. I like looking at the markets, but I only like doing it because I want to take care of my family and the people who matter so much to me. Um, that was my wedding day earlier this year. I don't know why that picture is here in the, <laughs> in the feed. And that's our little family and our children. This is why I trade. This is why I'm here. I'm not here today to sell you anything. Um, I'm, I'm not here. I'm here today to just share with you some stuff that has worked for me. And I hope that you and I can get to know each other and that I have, this is my family family right here. These are the most important people in the world to me. And then, then there's, I have a worldwide family of traders that I've built over the last 17 years. Um, thousands and thousands of traders around the world, and, and that's my other family. And I hope that today we get to know each other a little bit better, and we learn some things together, and that you would consider um, maybe getting to know me, and me getting to know your situation, and, and, and how you're doing, and what's important to you. As Renee mentioned earlier on, you can go to my website anytime and join the free daily email, and then I'll just spam the crap out of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I won't. Um, I send cool stuff every day. Uh, almost everything that I offer is free, and it's instructional and entertaining, I hope. This is my new podcast that starts Monday. I've done, I've, I've had the number one podcast. I don't often brag, but I've had, I had the first podcast about trading, and I've had the number one podcast about trading in the world for over 10 years before even iTunes had podcasts and my brand new podcast starts up on Monday and it's called trading for a living and if you're on my email list or you stay in touch with me here you'll get early access to those episodes they're free they'll be on iTunes Google Stitcher smart radio SoundCloud and everywhere that glorious podcasts are published now before I go into the, the, the presentation and learning about trading with the trend I want to say just a couple more things, and I don't want you to get the idea that I'm here to brag about my, myself or tell you that I'm the greatest trader in the world. I have at times been the worst trader in the world. In 17 years, I have the experience to prove that I've made every mistake that can possibly be made. I've overtraded, I've traded a huge trade size, and then gotten stuck in a trade that is just out of control and really bad. Uh, traded like a crackhead, right? Just totally mindless trading. 
traded like I owed money to the mob that I had to make a lot of money in a really short period of time. And then the worst mistake I think that any of us can ever make, and, and that's just true for me, is that at times I've traded like it mattered what I looked like to other people. And what I mean by that is we live in a world of traders where it's, it's like important for some people to brag or to look like they're better at it than other people. And what I want to have happen is that you're better than me. I'm here because I want you to succeed and because in 17 years I've just fallen in love with traders and speaking to traders and talking to traders. And as I have done that, and I trade my own money and whatever else, I've just made all the mistakes. And I wanna be open about that because I think that's the path to helping you learn from my mistakes. So I wanna invite you to ask questions as we go and interact and, and say hello and let me know where you're from and um, let's get on with it. Uh, a risk warning, most traders do lose money. Most traders are just terrible. Most discretionary traders are just awful, like really bad. Most traders lose money for a reason um, because trading involves a substantial risk of loss and most traders are trying to make a lot of money really quickly. And so I wanna make sure it's just public. I, I hope this isn't you, but I don't know you personally. Um, so I just need to make sure you, you understand that I'm not making any promises about how much money you're gonna make. Um, the results I'm going to show you today are probably not typical for most people, and then you probably shouldn't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Now, I know that's not you. You're probably, um, you're probably ready to make some money. So Hector says, when are we getting to the meat? That's kind of an inappropriate question. Oh, you mean the, the, the educational stuff. Let's get into that right away. So here, let's talk about, let's talk about pivot points, Hector. Buenos dias, Hector. Let's talk about pivot points. A pivot point is the high plus the low plus the close of the day divided by three. Now, most of you know what a pivot point is. There could be daily pivots and weekly pivots and monthly pivots. And those are all really important to my own trading. Um, today, we're gonna primarily focus on daily pivots. Now, this is the Euro British pound and circled in red on the, in the middle of the screen is a daily pivot. I always color my daily pivots blue. Um, and I color them blue just uh, to make sure that across all of my charts and all of my time frames and everything that I do, they're always the same. Now, a daily pivot, once it's put on the chart, never moves. A daily pivot doesn't, uh, doesn't change where it was. It doesn't go to a different location. It's not a dynamic indicator. Once it's here, it's there for good, and it doesn't move ever again. All right, let's move on to the next one. And pivots are a standard feature on most charting platforms that don't suck. Like almost every single charting platform in the world is going to have pivots on it. And so they're easy to find and they're a free indicator. Now a missed pivot was a pivot point that was not touched by price on the day that it was created. And this is a critically important element of what I'm gonna teach you today. And it's a significant way that I've made back the money that I've lost on stupid trades that I've taken or whatever else. This is a critically important concept that I think is often and well, always overlooked. All right. So here's Apple uh, and a missed daily pivot. Apple's earnings came out one day or whatever it was and a daily pivot was down here and price launched upward and it didn't hit the daily pivot. So the daily pivot, the whole day went by and the candles did not touch the daily pivot. Um, however, look at this over here. On all these other days, the daily pivot was hit or it was touched by price. But on some days, the daily pivot is not touched by price. And I call those missed daily pivots. And it's an early warning sign that a trend is coming. A missed pivot is an early warning sign that the market is going to continue moving in the same direction that it was moving when the daily pivot was missed. 80% of all daily pivots on stocks, futures, currencies are touched by price on the day that they were created. 80% of them is a super high probability. And we can, we can turn that into a trading system. Anytime you have percentages and probabilities, you can turn that into a trading system. So 80% of all daily pivots are touched by price on the day that they are created. Here's a picture of Adam and God reaching out for a pivot. There you see it in the middle. And there's uh, the new Tom Hanks movie. Let's look at some real examples. All right, this is the Euro Canadian dollar. Love this example. 
What you see here going on is a classic example of a missed daily pivot on day one leading to and giving an early warning sign that a trend is coming and price will fall further. In other words, price is dropping on day one, let's call this day one, and it's dropping so far so fast that the daily pivot doesn't get hit, doesn't get touched by price. Whereas this day's pivot got hit by candles, you know, all the, almost all the rest of them on the chart got hit by price. That is an early warning sign that price is going to drop lower. This is a critically important concept and hugely, this is a high probability trading system that I've used for a long, 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 long time. This is Tesla. Uh, Tesla is just a rocket ship of a stock, of course. But every, you know, occasionally it goes into consolidation mode and it hits its daily pivots, which is traditionally what will happen. The market doesn't trend most of the time. Most of the time, the market is in a ranging phase where it's just hitting daily pivots back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then it lulls people to sleep and periods of low volatility lead into periods of high volatility. And those high volatility periods are otherwise really actually known as trends most of the time. And you can see here that on the... 17th of January of 2017, Tesla was moving upward and it didn't touch the daily pivot. Now that day is over. Once that day is over, at the close of trading, that day is over. What I say here, X marks the spot. At that point in time, I say, we are going to see an additional 24 to 36 hours of movement in the same direction that that trend was going. All right, let's see if I can bring this back, erase all the drawings, get out my pointer tool, and we're back on track. This is uh, the 10-year note. Some of you might trade bonds. It doesn't matter. You, you trade bonds, you can trade stocks, you could trade Forex, it doesn't really matter. This is the 10-year note, and it misses a daily pivot. A daily pivot is missed by price. It's circled in red. And you can see here that price then drops further. Now you can pull this up on your own charts. You, if you trade currencies, if you trade stocks, whatever you trade, you can do your own experimentation and your own testing with this. You can, you can verify this on your own. There's no such thing as a 100% guaranteed system, but this is hugely reliable. And I, I want, you don't need any special indicators. You don't need any, uh, you don't need to buy anything to test this out for yourself. You can verify this on your own without any special indicators of any kind. Now I want to say, I want to focus on something here that we're going to concentrate our attention on the first missed pivot in a series. So if, let's go back here. Um, for example, this is uh, the 10-year note. This is day one and it misses a daily pivot and then it drops. Well, on day two, it also misses its daily pivot. We're going to ignore that because we got one on day one. We're only going to focus taking our trades based on a day one. So let's say that you missed this and you weren't looking at this financial instrument on day one. You come in on day two and it misses another one. You go, oh man, I'll get in on that. Even though this drops further, I would recommend only concentrating your trading and this system that I'm going to teach you on using day one, the first day that the pivot is missed. Sometimes you get multiple uh, pivots in a row that are missed and we just want to ignore that. That's corn, I don't care about corn futures. When I'm trading stocks with this method, I use a 15-minute chart. And when I'm trading Forex and everything else, I use a 60-minute chart to do this. That doesn't change the position of the pivots, but it does change the way that I take the entries, which I'm going to teach you in this webinar. So we having a good time? Is everybody doing all right? Um, Kitty says, how do you identify the pivot of the day? Well, great question, Kitty. Um, your charting platform should plot a pivot for you. So if... Um, we just exit out here or go over to my charts here. So this is, these are my charts here on uh, tradingview.com. And if you right click on the charts here and you go to insert indicator, and I type in pivots, it comes up with pivot points standard. Every single charting platform in the world, it, on every platform, this is a free indicator. Every single one of them. Um, everybody has pivots. All the major charting platforms have pivots. So you don't have to get anything or buy anything special. Every charting platform has them. TradeStation, eSignal, uh, TradingView.com, MetaTrader has uh, 
those as well. So you don't even have to worry about, you don't need to download anything special. Your charting platform will have pivots built into them. And we're gonna focus on the, just the daily pivot, the center pivot. We're not gonna focus on R1 or S1 levels. We're just gonna focus on the, the daily pivot, the middle line. I don't even show the other levels. I take them off of my chart. Now these trades setups that we're gonna talk about today, they're small, they're bread and butter moves. They're, they're, gener they're things that you could find every day across, you could follow 30 or 40 financial instruments and you can find several trades every single day if you want to trade every day. And so they're designed to be trades that make you money every day. Now you can turn this into a system that maybe looks for really, really big trades, but I, I wouldn't re necessarily recommend that. So here's how to take these trades. Uh, this is Grana y Montero. I have no idea what this company does. It doesn't matter what this company does, and it, it doesn't make any difference at all. This could be a currency. This could be a stock. It doesn't matter what it is. Let's just use this as an example. So on day one, we have the missed daily pivot. The day ends, and generally on day two, at the beginning of day two, price will drop to the next day's pivot, and it will hit the next day's pivot and in this case, we will buy this stock at that daily pivot on that retracement. And then we will hold that trade for 24 to 36 to 72 hours. You can choose what you wanna do. The longer you hold it, the more profit potential you have. But also the longer you hold it, the more potential there is for price to reverse and turn against you. So I like holding these trades for 24 to 36 hours at the most. This is a missed daily pivot on corn. We looked at this example earlier. So it misses its daily pivot on day one, and then it drops to the pivot on day two, and then it just, and it goes against us. So what you can do in these instances is place a protective stop loss below the lows of the candles or bars that hit the daily pivot on day two, and then you stop out of the trade. You don't have to hold on to a trade that's going against you. You can be safe. Now, if you want to hold on to these trades with a very, very, very small trade size and give them a chance to come back, in most cases, they do come all the way back, but you want to be careful about that, and you want to be sure that what you are doing is protecting yourself above all else. Let's put on do not disturb. There we go. Here's Tesla, and we'll give you another example. It moves up on day one. On day two, it drops to the daily pivot, places stop loss underneath price, and hold on to that trade for 24 to 36 hours. This is the 10 year note, it misses a daily pivot, it retraces to the next day's pivot and drops from there. And so those are all short term kind of day trade type things that you can do. But one really nice, awesome, cool, amazing, spectacular, wonderful thing is that all really big trends begin with a missed daily pivot. Check this out. This is really, uh, this is one of my favorite things. Let's look at some examples of really big trends. This is some weird stock, but it could be a currency. It could be a, it could be any financial instrument that you want to look at. And this stock goes from a high of 11 down to, it loses 60% of its value. Guess what, guess what starts that whole move off? A missed daily pivot. A missed daily pivot was the beginning of this entire collapse. Every significant and major trend over the last 10, 20 years started off with a missed daily pivot. Now, not every missed daily pivot created a giant trend, but every significant, major, spectacular trend started with a missed daily pivot. This is BP started with a missed daily pivot. How do you get into one of those trades? How would you get into one of those really, really, really big trades? Well, you would use what I call Knoxville divergence. Now, I built this indicator um, a few years ago, and I'll share a little bit about how I built that indicator. But uh, what that indicator is, it, is it will display a red line above or below your candles. And I call it Knoxville divergence, or KD for short. 
I sat in this coffee shop in Knoxville, Tennessee called the Old City Java House, Java coffee shop thing. And I sat at this table right here in 2013. And I'd been trading at that time for about 13 years. And I was working on coding and writing the code for a brand new indicator, which is now called Knoxville Divergence because I wrote it and finished it while I was sitting in this coffee shop. So that's where the name comes from. Now what I do, um, to look for the really big trends is I look for a Knoxville divergence line on the weekly chart followed by a missed daily pivot. So number one, I look for Knoxville divergence and number two, I looked for a missed daily pivot. And those two things in combination are absolutely spectacular. Now, if you follow the podcast or you jump over to the website and you're on the email list or whatever it is that you wanna do, I'm going to, I'm going to, I do a bunch of lessons. I do stuff on Facebook all the time and I'll send you links so that you can learn more about that method. I don't have enough time in this webinar today because it's a little bit shorter than sometimes we do, but I do a little video every day here on Facebook and um, I will continue to broadcast and, and I do videos all the time and I share how I do some of these things and whatever else on that Facebook page. So if you want to learn about those really, really big moves, stay in touch there because I will make sure that I teach you more about those really big moves. All right. What I want to do right now though, is I want to show you some examples from the currency market about that day trading method that I had. And I want to show you some examples of how that works in practice um, so that you can kind of see what it looks like. And I don't want to give you the impression that I'm only going to show you some examples on a slide that are like, oh, there's the really good examples and it always works. I want to show you where it doesn't work and where it breaks down and some of the problems that you have. So here's a missed daily pivot on day one on the British pound Swiss franc. Now what I said to you was a little while ago that on day two, we want to wait for price to retrace and hit the daily pivot. Well, it doesn't happen. So in this case, there's a great trend on the British pound Swiss franc, but we, can, we can't get into that trend. We can't get that trade because it doesn't retrace. So in that example, you don't really get the trade at all. And that's kind of disappointing. We don't even worry about the second day's missed pivot and we don't worry about the third day's missed pivot. Well, we kind of do. I'll give you a little side note here. If you miss three daily pivots in a row, you have a 90 plus percent chance of a very significant retracement lower. A huge, huge likelihood of a really big retracement lower if you miss three daily pivots in a row. Once again, that's something for us to talk about maybe on a video on Facebook or stay in touch ab about that situation. Um, price turns around, you can see these Knoxville divergences at the top, and then price turns and it misses a daily pivot. We'll call this day one because this is the first missed daily pivot in a series. On day two, we retrace to the day two pivot, so we sell, and then price just goes down from there and we would hold that for 36 hours, 24 to 36 hours, and it does a really great job of falling significantly. Now you'll see here that it misses this one and it misses another one, it misses two daily pivots in a row. When price is gonna miss two or three, or it almost never misses four, two or three daily pivots in a row, you're gonna get a retracement back up. You're gonna see price return in the opposite direction. So just choose another currency pair. That's the uh, British pound Swiss franc. Here's the US dollar, Canadian dollar. And you go over here and we miss a daily pivot on day one. On day two, we retrace to the daily pivot. We could buy it here and try to ride that up. We might get stopped out on a trade below those lows, or we could trade it with a really small trade size and hold on to that no matter what for 24 hours. And in most cases, we're going to be rewarded for that. Then we get another missed daily pivot a couple of days later. We wait for the retracement and price goes up from there as well. And then the US dollar, Canadian dollar and all Canadian dollar pairs rarely miss their daily pivot. 
almost never, all the Canadian dollar pairs are incredibly reliable at hitting their daily pivots. Uh, let's look at um, the worst currency pair in the whole world, the US dollar Japanese yen. We'll just scroll back in time so we're at least giving it a chance. I'll just, I'll, let's just randomly scroll back way back. Let's see how far we can go back. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Just went back at random. Um, this is a missed daily pivot. We retrace to the daily pivot here, and then the dollar yen falls lower, and so on and so forth, and whatever else. Does anybody here want to look at a, a favorite financial instrument? Do you have a favorite financial instrument, a stock or um, something that you're looking at right now? Let me know in the in the comments or in the questions here, and we could take a look at that for you. What I want to do now is, um, if I can. I want to see if anything's missing a daily pivot today. Well, that was one, that was the Australian dollar Japanese yen, dropped yesterday, rose to the daily pivot today, and then dropped again. That's not a surprise. Let's see if we can find another one. Australian dollar Swiss franc did that yesterday. Is anything missing a daily pivot today is what I'm looking for. This is the Canadian dollar Swiss franc. Well, there we go. This was, uh, that's day two though. So. Yeah, that doesn't really count. That's two daily pivots in a row. Oh, gold. Okay, we'll look at pound yen, gold, and the euro dollar. Great. Gold is a little bit interesting. I'm just going to look at spot gold right here. Um, you could look at Bitcoin if you wanted to. Here's a missed daily pivot and then a retracement down to the next day's pivot. You could place a stop loss underneath price or just trade a small uh, position size and then just ride that sucker up. Then it missed the pivot yesterday or the day before, dropped down to this pivot, and now it might be jumping up higher. Stop loss underneath those lows. That is awesome. Let's look at the Euro US dollar. Um, three daily pivots in a row that have been missed. I would definitely expect, uh, if we can fall below these lows, I would definitely expect a move at least on the Euro down to a uh, dollar ten. $1.1050. And then someone else wanted to look at the Orient Express, the British pound Japanese yen. British pound Japanese yen collapsed with the rest of the financial system yesterday and it missed its daily pivot. Then it rose to hit the next day's pivot, which is no surprise. Stop loss above these levels here and then targets down below. That is totally awesome. I love looking at these. Aftab Tudor Trader says, what is daily pivot? Uh, you just watch the recording. We'll cover that later. We went over that at the very beginning of the presentation. Sorry, you missed that section. Um, so, Aditian says missing means the price did not touch it at all. Is it still counted as a missed pivot if the pivot touched by a wick? What a great question. The answer is it's not missed if it was touched. 100%. You can't, so it has to be fully missed. No touchy, no touchy. F tab is asking for my Facebook page. You are more than welcome to, there we go. So you go to facebook.com slash Rob Booker Trader. You can, I'm happy to be in touch with you anytime um, on the Facebook page. That's the best place to stay in touch with everything that I do. Um, so yeah, that's what a missed pivot is. Uh, we could look at another, you know, we could even look at some of these crazy currencies like the South African Rand, kind of a wild, crazy uh, currency. Check out what's happening here. The, the, when you get into the exotics, you get into a little bit of trouble sometimes. So let me walk you through like the exotics, the Mexican peso, the Turkish lira, the Thai bot, those kinds of crazy currencies, the South African Rand. We miss a pivot on day one. We rise to the pivot on day two, sell it with a stop loss. That stop either gets blown out or price goes against you a long way. That's the problem with, a, with an exotic currency pair or a penny stock, for example. Penny stocks are just, you know, they can blow out your stop losses. So you got to, if it's an exotic currency or if it's a penny stock, you want to make sure that you stop out of the trade uh, when things go wrong. We're missing today's daily pivot on the US dollar South African Rand. So we would expect later on we will drop to a daily pivot and then launch higher with a stop loss underneath. Um, 
Here's a recent stock that I thought was really interesting. This is EXAS, misses its daily pivot, probably on earnings, right? So on earnings, I don't know what these earnings were. Nobody really cares anyway. Um, earnings were less bad than expected, so it jumped up. Um, and misses a daily pivot, retraces, and then launches higher. Um, crazy, crazy financial instrument. I have a lot to say about that kind of stuff, but um, US dollar Turkish lira looks exactly like the US dollar South African rand, so we don't have to focus on that. The Turkish lira, Japanese yen, if you're trading that one, then you got problems. I can't. Um... Okay, Kevin says, I'm on trading view and my pivots have all these weird levels. Great question, Kevin. Let me help you out. So you double click on the daily pivot. Here's what I would recommend. You could double click on the daily pivot. You go traditional. I think that's funny. They have Fibonacci pivots, Woody pivots, classic pivots, DeMarc, and then Lando Calrissian pivots. Um, you want to choose daily, and you can go pivots back 65 or so, so you can see a bunch of them historically. Um, then you check the box for daily pivot, make sure that's checked, and then you uncheck all of the other levels, Kevin. But because you asked such a good question, Kevin, what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to show you another cool method. If you do check S1 and S2, check this out. Price, if it can get all the way to S2, Kevin, and misses a daily pivot, that is oftentimes where you get a retracement back up. Does that make sense? When it's missing a daily pivot, and not hitting it, and it hits S2, sometimes you can get a nice bounce up there for just a little bit of profit. Does that make sense, Kevin? That's kind of a really cool trade that I don't, like once again, there's a lot of really cool stuff we can talk about that we don't really, we don't wanna get into it today, but there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can talk about. Um, to finish things off, what I'm gonna do is double click on this and get rid of those levels. I would like to give you my Knoxville Divergence Indicator uh, so that you can play around with the divergence indicator. And so what I want to do right now is teach you how it's set up and then we'll get your email and send you out a link to download that or Renee and the folks at Investor Inspiration can send you a link to download that. Um, and I'll give you a couple of places that you can stay in touch with me as we finish. But I want to show you how that indicator is built so that you um, can grab that indicator and then you know how it's made. This is just a daily chart of the US dollar Japanese yen. You can see this red Knoxville divergence line is up above, and that's an early warning sign that price is gonna drop lower. So not surprisingly, guess where it's gonna drop to? A daily, a weekly, or a monthly pivot. Not a surprise. Now, in this chart, price is moving upward, but the momentum indicator is falling, and that's what we call divergence. Price is going one way, momentum is going another. That's divergence. At the same time that's happening, the relative strength index set to 21 is overbought. These three things together equals Knoxville divergence. So it will print a red line if price is moving up, momentum is moving down, and it was overbought during that time. It also works for bullish divergence. And you can see here, price is moving down, momentum is moving up, and the relative strength index was oversold. Now, using Knoxville divergence to plan a trade is not as straightforward as using the pivots. This is kind of more advanced, and when you download the free indicator, I give you some training to go with it so you know when to ignore it and when to actually buy it or use it. And we can get into that in further training. I mean, we got, we got some time to get to know each other. So hopefully you'll stay in touch with me and, and I'll stay in touch with you. And by so doing, we can uh, work together on some of this other stuff that we didn't have time to get into today. I would recommend jump over to the Facebook page and like the page. That would be great. Um, and then Renee or uh, the folks at Investor Inspiration will either pass your email address on to me with your permission and I'll send you a link so you can download this indicator for free for all of your charts for like MetaTrader, eSignal, um, and a bunch of other places. Uh, and so if that sounds good to you, that sounds good to me. And Renee, I just wanna say thank you for inviting me to come by and stop by and say hi to everybody today. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure to spend some time with all of you. I hope to get to know you better in the future. And um, I'll, get you, I'll get in touch with you about the podcast that starts up on Monday. I think you're really going to love it.